Let's talk about our capture tab for a second. Our capture tab allows us to be able to see how much information we have that we're going to collect into beam gauge. So right now, I'm collecting 16 frames. And if you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner, we've got a little slider bar that's there. Okay. Beam gauge uses system memory, uses your RAM. And I can make that dynamic. I can change it. If I want to have, if I want to record more like in your TiVo, I can expand this up. I can change it from 16 frames to as many as I'd like to based on how much RAM I have on my computer. Okay. So if let's say this camera is running at seven frames per second, if I have that set for 16, I'm only going to get two seconds worth of data. So if you need to collect more data, record for a longer time period, come in here, change this from 16 to a much larger number, and it'll allow you to record a much bigger block. It's going to tell you down below, it's going to tell you how much memory it's, it's using up. Based on some cameras, we have very high megapixel cameras, others are a lot lower resolution. It's going to change based on which camera you're using, how much RAM you've actually got acquired. This next option is for doing a write protect. Let's say you have that perfect picture and you want to keep that. You can write protect that. So it stores it in your buffer and it'll loop all the way through, come back around and when beam gauge gets back to that one, it'll skip it. It'll, it'll keep it in memory, but it'll skip over it and put the next picture in the next slot. And that way you can always go back to it and see that one that you said, hey, this is my best so far. Am I getting anything that's better than that? And that allows you to be able to write protect that. This next one is it's our processing menu. This is what makes Ophir Spirocon's beam gauge software different than a lot of our competition. Most of our competition allows you to either do summing or averaging. And let me explain those a little bit. Summing, what summing is, is it's actually taking one picture, adding, adding, adding. And that's what summing is. You just add up all those sig that signal from all those pictures and you get one resultant. Averaging is different. It takes, say, three frames and then gives you an average result of all those three frames. And that's where we're different than our competition. Our competition allows you to do one or the other. We allow you to do both. So you could take and you could do a lot of summing, take that really, really, really weak signal, multiply it, and then at the same time you could take that again as one average, add another one, and add another one. So it allows you to be able to do very detailed, deep data analysis. Take that really weak signal, bring it right up out of the noise. This next menu is if you is for uh, a frame. If you're if you've got a frame and you want to add some comments to it, and you saw something that was just a little weird, you want to note it. You can add this. You can add in this comment box. You can add it to a frame, or you can add it to all of them. So let's say you're doing testing on a laser and you want to know what parameters you were running at, you can put that in the comments box. Or if you just saw one anomaly, the laser hiccuped at this particular frame, you can record it and then come back in and add those notes a little bit later. This reference menu, it's, a, it's an option to be able to turn on and say here's a perfect Gaussian as compared to my data. My data is a little bit noisy, but what does its Gaussian equivalent look like? And that's what this option is for. This source rate, this is again where our, our software is different than a lot of other software. Right now we're running in what we call a frame priority. And you have the option to do either a frame priority or a results priority. Frame priority means I'm most concerned about the next frame from the camera. Give me the next frame and show it to me. People will use this if they really don't care about the numbers so much but they're more concerned about seeing the next picture from the camera. That's what frame priority allows you to do. We recommend running in results priority. The difference between results priority and frame priority is results. I'm more concerned about getting the calculations done for that frame. So the camera may send you three frames, but if it's not done computing frame number one and all the parameters that you have turned on, it will ignore frame two and frame three until it's done. Once it's done, then it will accept the next frame from the camera. We recommend the results priority. Why? Because that way your results are the most accurate. It's great to be able to get a picture, but we want to be able to calculate all that information on it. We need to be using the results priority menu. 
the option next to it is allowing us to be able to capture at different intervals. And this is something that we've had a lot of customers ask for and allows us to be able to kind of set up the way we collect data from a camera differently. We can collect all the frames, just stream us the video, give us all that video. Or if we wanted to, we could set and capture one frame over a time period. Let's say you're running a laser for a 24 hour time period. And if you're collecting it's seven and a half frames a second, 30 seconds, 60 minutes, 24 hours, that's a lot of data. You could overfill your hard drive pretty quickly with that much data. So instead, how about we set it up so we collect one frame every minute. Then we've got 60 frames for 24 hours. Still a lot of data, we can slim it down even more. We could collect one frame every hour. That way you can set up your test and beam gauge runs and overnight it just does the data collection for you. You come back in the next morning and it's ready to go. It's got all your data. The next option we have is capture X frames over a time period. Let's say we wanted to be able to collect 24 frames over a 15 minute period. Beam gauge will do the math for you. It'll figure out, okay, every so often take a frame so that when I get to the end of that time period, I have that many frames collected. Or we can do what's called a burst capture. And that burst capture allows you to be able to capture a big burst of frames. Let's say you want to capture 15 frames and then wait for a 15 minute period and then capture 15 frames again. So you're not capturing just one frame, you're capturing a burst of frames in that time period. So that's kind of a nice feature to be able to have if you're doing a lot of deep data analysis. One other feature that we have here is we have the ability to do what's called off-axis correction. Let's say you're working with a lens because your beam is this big. There isn't a camera out there that's got a, a detector that's this big. So we're going to put a lens on that camera and we're going to shine the we're going to shine the, the laser at a target and the camera is going to be off on an angle so we've got an angle of 45 degrees allows us to be able to compensate because if you take a quarter and you hold a quarter up straight like this and you look at it that quarter is going to look round but if you turn that quarter on a 45 degrees now the quarter looks really narrow this way but it still looks the same height how do you correct for that and that's what our off-axis correction allows you to do is it allows you to be able to expand or compress one axis over the other.